Good evening and welcome to episode 12 of In At The Side. I'm Dom Harvin. I'm joined by Neil Williamson, a.k.a. Scenario Neil. And tonight we're joined by the man who does this. Didn't gamble on the strike, been too heavy, so he strokes it through, gets it through the post and look at his reaction. Of course, tonight we're joined by USA Eagles fly half, Will Hooley. How are you, Will? I'm very good, gents. How are you? Yes, not too bad, thank you. How's uh, lockdown live treating you? Obviously, the announcement today, we've got another three weeks of it before another review. Yeah, it's kind of getting to the point where it's it's that normality now, isn't it? Um, mm. You know, it's, uh, people sort of are, beforehand it was all like, oh, how strange does it feel? But actually now it's kind of just, yeah, it's part of just routine life. Um, I think for an athlete, it's... Um, it's very different. You're kind of used to having a schedule, being told what to do, where to be, what to eat, um, all of that. Um, so um, it's, uh, yeah, big difference to kind of now on your own, having to do the home workouts, go down to the park and kick a ball around on your own and whatever it might be. Uh, but look, you know, it's it, what needs to be done. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, as I say, getting into routine. In terms of that, then, Will, has Bedford set you any targets for training or anything like that, or, or have you are you in like a WhatsApp group with all the players keep, to keep in contact? What, what's going on there to keep in touch? Yeah, um, so got to be careful because actually we're furloughed, <laughs> the, oh, whole, wow. the whole team. Um, but um, no, look, obviously we're all mates and, and, and very much in contact. You know, whether it's um, me and my partner, we we live to, with each other um, and. Um, you know, other boys with their partners, and whether it's just sort of meeting up with a Zoom meeting, and one well, of the many quizzes going around the internet at yeah. the moment. Uh, any excuse to crack open a bottle of wine or something. Um, but look, look, the players, we we got communicated uh, in regards to you know, body weight sessions you can do. Uh, they actually allowed us to uh, basically actually borrow some weights from the club before the lockdown. So it was sort of like a run to the gym, uh, see what you could get <laughs> before, <laughs> before then we were uh, in, in the situation we are in now. So, um, and then a few sort of programs, uh, running sessions to to do. Um, uh, so look, there, there is that sort of uh, organisation from the club, which was good. And, and then we also had some Zoom uh, meeting calls to discuss the financial side of things, um, the furlough scheme that we've obviously gone on to. Um, and yeah, just kind of be up to date with everything because I like, like for everyone, it's so uncertain at the moment uh, and these unprecedented times. So uh, just having a bit of communication with a team uh, and, and the whole management is, is very important. And what's the mood at, at the club like at the moment? Obviously, championship seemingly cut short. Um, would you, you know, what's the reflection on the season? Obviously, finishing eighth is, you know, do you think that's a fair reflection on uh, how it's been for you, you boys this season? Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. I mean, I, I can only really sort of speak on my own experience, obviously coming out from the World Cup and then coming back into it. Um, you know, I, I was really keen to to get back and help the team out. We didn't start the season very well. Um, but really, for us, I know 2020 has not been the year at all for many people, uh, yeah. and really anyone. But actually, for us, we started the season very well. Sorry, we started the calendar year very well. Um, we finally turned a corner and it's amazing how just momentum is a massive thing in sport. You know, we just didn't have any kind of momentum, didn't really know our, our kind of idea as a team, uh, which was frustrating, especially as a halfback when you come into it and you yeah. feel uh, a bit like um, a bit clueless uh, as to what's going on. But, um, but look, yeah, we eventually managed to turn a corner and we were doing and playing some decent stuff. Um it's just a shame, obviously, the season's been cut short. Is eight probably a fair reflection? Yeah, probably is. I mean, obviously, we we say that we were on a roll and, and like to think we would have won more games. But look, in the grand scheme of things, um, with everything that's going on there, that's the least of our, our concerns uh, um, as a club and as players. Mm. Yeah, now, obviously, sorry, Dom. No, say, no, I started um, coming through the academy at Northampton, um, obviously, Deeds as well. Um, so you've got a, you know, quite, quite a big flurry into the, in the Premiership already. Um, one question I was going to ask, is there a massive gulf in sort of standard between the, the, the Premiership and the Championship? Or do you think that, that it's not happening? Or what, what's the sort of situation? What's the difference between the two, would you say? It's a good question. I think it'd be wrong for me to say that there isn't... Um, there is quite a big standard uh, difference overall, I think, ultimately. And I mean that just in terms of the, the teams and how they're set up and the tactics of a premiership team 
ultimately spending more time with each other. Yeah, higher quality caliber of players, higher quality caliber of coaches probably as well. Um, so yeah, there, there's going to be that natural. Golf is not the probably the word I want to use, but there's sort of uh, difference. Um, I think for me though is I honestly can say in my experience of Championship rugby, I've had some of the most enjoyable games, some of the most fast-paced games, some of the most physical games I've ever had. Um, you know, you have uh, a combination of incredible young talent um, who had actually given uh, a go on the pitch, unlike the incredible young talent, which is sometimes not given a go on the pitch in the Premiership. Yeah. Um, and um, then you combine that with the experienced guys as well that come down and um, I think the stalwarts of the Championship who kind of know the uh, nooks and crannies, the, the dark places uh, to put the youngsters in. So... Um, it's an incredibly hard league. I mean, that's the one thing I would say. Uh, it's kind of like, I really thought to myself, right, I'll go down. I'll jump back, straight back up if I can. Yeah. Happy days. I didn't appreciate just how tough, especially being a halfback as well. Yeah. It is, you know, it's an incredibly testing environment. It's attritional um, week after week. Um, and you come across some very talented, very good players, very good teams. So look, to answer your question, yeah, I think there is, there is, a difference uh, mm -hmm. in standard, but at the same time, the championship, in my view, is is, is, a, is an incredibly impressive league. And well, we're going to see what the future holds for it uh, eventually. Yeah. But um, you know, my view for my rugby development is be key. Yeah, that's good. So obviously, you touched on the World Cup. Um, obviously, we, don't, we well, we touched on this with Dallin, uh two weeks ago. Oh yeah, um, yeah. About obviously the bankruptcy of USA Rugby. Um, did you obviously a few people I spoke to said it was uh, inevitable and COVID's just sort of been the final nail in the coffin you know as a USA player obviously having just come off the back of a World Cup how does that you know what is that sort of what's your feeling for the future on that is it a good thing to have a refresh maybe get the right people in the right places or yeah, I, I think this I could think... just be another maybe false start yeah look Dom I think to be honest, uh, well, we actually got <clears throat> told as a player group. So we actually got told by Gary Gold. He, he actually messaged us, uh, gave us an email before the news came out into the media, which I think was quite good yeah. to uh, kind of give us that scope. Um, I Look, it's uh, I've been obviously only involved with USA Rugby for uh, the best part of just over two years. So it's hard for me to make big comments. And, um, you know, I have I probably have, you know, things which I look at and think, God, I wish they did that differently. I have things which I look at and think, yeah, that will go in the right direction. Um, spent a lot of time. I was a roommate with him um, a good amount of time during the World Cup with um, Blaine Scully. Um, Blaine, uh, obviously an ex-captain and now uh, retired. Uh, but he's going to be, I think, really important going forward because he's got a big player voice with the uh, yeah. Players Association. And, I, and look, I just think USA Rugby and rugby in the USA is, is a tough nut to crack. And I, what I realise when you're over there is um, if people are aware of it and the USA team are doing good and everything about it, then, you know, the American public think, wow, this sport is amazing. The sad thing is, is you know, USA rugby doesn't have probably the big budget that everyone probably just associates USA to have. Yeah. It's a shame. Um, you know, it's nothing ultimately against the people in charge, but you don't hear some great stories as to how it was run before. Yeah. Um, you know, whether that be the, the, the TV deals, it, it breaks me, if I'm honest, that the fact that our USA games are behind paywalls, um, because ultimately you're trying to actually give the game to the fans rather than, yeah. you, you know, and, and gain new fans rather than trying to basically say, come on, go and you know, buy it behind a paywall. Uh, watch behind a paywall so that there are those elements of frustration as a player that you always hear about and see but it's probably all for me to completely say without being too politically <laughs> right about it um but i just hope that you know from all of this we can um well i like the bankruptcy you talked about i just hope that things can be reset and, and and sorted out properly because i do believe ultimately the future of usa rugby i do believe is in good hands i'm sure we'll come on to it with the mlr but gary gold's still there as head coach yeah um the players we have we were so disappointed in our performance of the world cup i feel like we peaked just before it <laughs> um uh, and the year before it as well but um i'm sure it will get sorted out i'm confident it will get sorted out um it's just it might be a bit of a slow burner particularly obviously with the covid19 situation yeah, it's interesting you mentioned um, obviously the following for rugby in USA. So it's actually leads me to the question I was going to ask. You kind of 
half covered it there. And um, I, I totally agree with the the funding that the USA puts behind American football or football for them, obviously. Um, if they put a fraction of that budget and and the the you know focus behind rugby, they could be you guys could be a dangerous dangerous team because. I was saying to Don before we started the call, you know, Americans, you know, if you look at athletics, look at every other sport that, that they compete heavily in, they throw themselves completely into it. And, you know, mm. it, I think in five, ten years time, if, if you know, uh, the, the viewer figures come there and, and people, you know, start to, to wake up to it and you know, start to win new fans around, America could be a very dangerous team. I think, yeah, you're right, Neil. I mean, the thing is, is, is I said before how, what I realize when in America, there's two things. Is one, it's got to be accessible, and I mean that not just in terms of on the TV, but in terms of in the colleges. It, well, if rugby can go collegiate um, and it can be as a proper college program, then that is when I really think things will really start to happen. You'll really see sort of talent come through the system. Not that it's not already, but I mean, like you know, we do want to be looking at these. I want to call them NFL rejects. You know, mm. the, the kind of the athletes who don't yeah. quite. Make it um yeah. because you also see it here a lot of parents say oh i don't really want my kid to go to the nfl because it's just so cutthroat mm. you know and then that's it you're just left on the street kind of thing yeah um meanwhile i think they see rugby with its values and everything it has around it uh, as something that is 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 correct um but yeah I, I i i just feel as well with america is we naturally we have to be better at it <laughs> the team yeah. um you know, it was fantastic when we had in 2018, we had pretty much an unbeaten year with beat Scotland. It was great. But you realise how actually in the public, it wasn't really over the national newspapers. It was in a tiny corner of a back page. Yeah. Um, it's because people just don't really know completely about it. I mean, ultimately, they don't even know rugby's going on. Um, so it has to just try and be more accessible and... Um, and whether that's say that's TV in colleges, uh, the MLR obviously is going to be very important going forward. Um, and in terms of the money into it as well, it's about getting the right people. Um, but you've got to see look, supply and demand, isn't it? You've got to have a demand for rugby to be able to um, actually, you know, put funds into it. I, I think it's going the right direction, particularly with the Major League Rugby. But at the same time, um, there's a lot to be done. It, it's it's one of those where. It's a horrible job to have being the head of USA Rugby. Yeah, uh, can't be easy. But at the same time, as you say, the possibility is that you know it kills us when we hear, "Oh, it's the sleeping giant." You know, yeah. I, I believe that like, we we're not a sleeping giant. We we have the, the actual ability to be very good. We yeah. have shown that on occasions, but it's about how we can keep progressing, keep progressing, and be like a Japan, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to go on too long, but I mean, actually talk about Japan. But you look at how good they've brought themselves into the picture in the last eight years yeah. i do believe if somehow we can get a world cup in the usa that mm -hmm. could send the whole sport let alone usa rugby yeah. skyrocketing um which i you know i do believe i think we might be talking about it later but rugby in general needs a bit of revamping so i think usa could be pivotal with that yeah definitely, definitely. so obviously you mentioned turning the sport into a official college program. Obviously, the MLR announcing last week or so that they will be holding a collegiate draft. Mm. What's your thoughts on that? Obviously, there's not a huge amount of programs in colleges at the moment. Do you think it's too early? Do you think, because I think reading through some of the criteria, they have to have attended th college for three years yeah. and played rugby in one of them and be 21 years old. Yeah. Is the main three. Um, mm. Obviously, with the lack of programs, is that going to mean, you know, I've seen, I spoke to a few people that say, you know, a lot of D1 players are going to be overlooked because of this draft and the publicity surrounding it, because obviously the D1 players won't be eligible for it. You know, do you, you know, do you think they need to implement the programs first and then focus on the draft? Yeah, look, it's one like uh, I've probably only read as much as you guys have read as well. Um, I think the one positive is it's trying to provide a pathway yeah. Of, uh, of getting to the national level and that I hope, I, I hope is you do well in your college you get scouted you then get into the MLR team or a, a, an MLR team you know and then these players are getting developed to a point where they can hopefully represent the USA and then that makes us better and it makes rugby better as a whole in the US so that that's the real positive there are yeah you, what you just mentioned there about whether talent might get overlooked I think 
what it's trying to do, and I think what the MLR are trying to do is they're really trying to rejuvenate the whole rugby system out there to try and be like the NFLs, to yeah. try and be like um, you know, the, the NBAs, their draft systems and stuff like that. Because I think naturally, if, if they can get that across to the US public, the US, uh, US public understand that. Um, and so you've got to remember that. Like, it's like in their terms, isn't it? You know, they know yeah, draft it, systems. Exactly. And, and geez, if I'm honest, if I look at it here in the UK, I mean, I think that'd be so cool. I mean, imagine like, you know, it, and again, I was kind of going off topic, but I think in the UK, so much talent is missed. And um, it's, you know, for example, if you're in a catchment area in London, you vote and you've got London Irish, uh, sorry, Saracens, for example, yeah. but they have a catchment of like 18,000, you know, registered players, kids, or whatever it might be. Meanwhile, in sale they've only got you know five thousand what yeah. i'm trying to say is there might be a lot of really good talent saris in, in that london area but they never get properly seen because they're only going to take a certain amount of numbers do you see what i mean so actually yeah, we yeah. spread the talent around the country it can be it can be useful for them now again that's maybe a little bit off topic but at the same time that's what a draft can bring it can bring like you know the ability to hopefully have um all mlr teams at a we're talking years down the line maybe but like having good quality competition um and um and therefore like the best colleges players maybe go to the team that struggled a bit the year before and and it's kind of like that's how the the, it gets shared around look as i say i think yeah it's early it's early doors i see what they're trying to do and i and i'm a massive advocate of if it means trying to not reinvent the wheel but actually try and reform stuff a bit yeah, I've got a bit, I've got an issue with rugby. How I think it's so old school. Uh, I think the people up top um, in the in, in the governing bodies as well. I think um, I I don't believe are trying to actually streamline the business uh, yeah. as a rugby as a product. Um, I believe that particularly here in the UK. Um, so I do <laughs> like it. It's quite refreshing to see the US try something different. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's per- it would per- be perfect, but they're trying. You know. But it does create that excitement, obviously. You know, you've got, we've got the NFL draft coming up next week. Um, yeah. And months and months before that, you get, like, everyone in the nation will know the top five picks, top ten picks, probably, as, you know, as these college kids. So, you know, the exposure for it, if they can mirror that level of exposure, sending scouts out, you know, you know, I think it, I think that is a really big positive of, you know, spreading the game, spreading, you know, the excitement about it. So, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, but then, obviously, you get, like, people, you know, you've got, like, Nonu and stuff like that coming over to the MLR. What's your opinion on that? Do you think the, the league needs superstars like that to attract to attract fans in? Obviously, they you know, they, they do help ticket sales-wise, but do you think they could be taking places of, you know, American players? Yeah, um, I think there's, it's got to be a balance. So, um, I think it's fantastic for some stars to come over. I think that, again, is only going to help the game grow, Um, you know, um, because it it then gathers momentum overseas. So, you know, people think, oh, geez, Mar Nonu, Bastro and, and, um, you know, Drew Mitchell, um, you know, these guys are either are playing in the MLR or thinking of playing in the MLR. Like, it gathers some big momentum. And, like, the other thing is, is, like, we want a strong competition out in the US. We want a strong MLR. And that's no disrespect to rugby in the States at the moment, but probably as an overall spread, it, it's, it still needs developing, right? So if you can chuck those guys in, and I, and I know for a fact from friends who are at San Diego, is Mar Nonu has helped. He's not just helped on the pitch, but he's educating guys, you know, telling, you know, his knowledge, which is, you know, that, I mean, that in itself is worth thousands of dollars. Yeah. So um, I do believe that's really good. The, the danger is to make sure that you don't, turn it into a um basically trying to get as many big stars over there try and give them loads of money and then boom the whole thing sort of goes under um so i think it'll be like it'll be like a minimum of players um foreigners whatever you want to call them um in each team and you've got to make sure they're sporadic you know it's quite clear, not quite clearly, but at the moment, there's probably, you look at teams like San Diego, New York, um, yeah. Seattle, although actually Seattle didn't actually have the best start <laughs> this season, but 
they are what I would call the, the most attractive clubs, probably just because of their models. So, but then it's important that if the stars do come over, you know, get them to Atlanta, get them to um, Old Glory in, um, in Washington. Um, so I, my belief is that I think it's good, but just on a minority rather than uh, getting too many in, if that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah, good balance, don't saturate it with stars. Yeah. Excellent. Now, um, just want to, yeah, I just wanted to bring it back to the championship for a second, Will. Um, obviously, um, we all know uh, Saracens going down, uh, have gone down. Um, how do you think they'll get on next year? Do you think they'll come straight back up? Do you think they'll struggle? What do you think is going to happen there? Well, first and foremost, we still need to know what on earth is going to go and go on with the league. Um, you know, um, and I mean that just in terms of with the whole situation of the Premiership, whether they finish it or not, whether some clubs go under or not, will they suddenly just ring friends to the Premiership? I don't know. I mean, there's, there's so many questions you could ask. So, But let's talk about it as if they were going to come down. Yeah, um, I think I always believe having good quality team in the league, such as, you know, the team that comes down, makes the league better. Um, mm-hmm. I hope um that maybe it might bring more television audience it might bring bigger crowds to the game you know yeah. for example Bedford, we always get one of our biggest crowd when we play against well it was newcastle Falcons this year if you see what i mean yeah so like there is always those benefits and um you know the fact is that saris are looking to keep a bit a load of their big stars whether they play or not if they do play again that'll bring uh, uh attendances uh, up high um I think when you look at them and you look at their just pedigree as a club, the coaching staff, the squad, regardless of who they're losing or regardless of players can or cannot play, they should win the league next year. Um, mm. But, you know, it's uh, it's a full season. Anything can happen. Everyone will be wanting to beat them. It'll be the cup final when you play Saracen. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, you know, for their sake, they they understand that they've, they've got to take this one on the chin and they've got to... Um, build themselves back up into the premiership. Uh, so I think it'd be good for the league. I think they should go up. Um, I think that'd be a very difficult side to um, play against, but uh, uh, we shall see. Cause as I say, there's a lot of unanswered kind of questions as to what on earth is going to happen with rugby after this whole coronavirus. Sure. Exactly. So do you find when you do play the, the top team that has come down, you do, whether it's yourself or the team, you just step that, find that extra gear. Yeah, hundred percent. I'll never forget when we played um, Bristol. Uh, I think it was t- t- two, two or three seasons ago. At Ashton Gate. Uh, There's three. It would have been three seasons ago. At Ashton Gate. We just lost eighteen points to thirteen. Which never a loss. Got tried this loud. That's another story. Um, and I just could not believe that day. Some lads who, when they had a Sky Sports camera on their back. Uh, you know, fresh haircut, you name it. They were um, they got out there and got absolutely stuck in. Not that they wouldn't get stuck in regularly on a weekend, but it was it just lifts you. You want to play your best because you know you're up against some quality players. Undoubtedly, most of those games against the big teams are on Sky on, on a TV camera. So um, yeah, and as I say, it's it's everyone's cup final in, in to yeah. a degree. For, for Newcastle, I spoke to I've got a good friend at Newcastle at the moment, and he just said how niggly it was. Didn't matter who, what team you're playing, particularly when you went to their place, as he would tell me. He just said you knew it was going to be hostile. You knew you were going to get yeah you know, get it in from all sides, um, and that's what the Saris will experience next year. And and and, and to a degree, there's probably a lot of players which will have never really experienced that. A yeah. sort of hearty uh, grind of championship rugby, which will be difficult. And, and you know, at the end of the day, uh, one thing that I I generally believe and have learned is anyone on their day in the championship can be anyone. Um, yeah, you had you know, a situation with, unfortunately, Leeds, uh, Yorkshire Carnegie this year. But usually everyone, if they're on it and you're not on it, then yeah, you can like be punished. Yeah, yeah. we had... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we had Sonotti Sonotti on, um, was it last night or the night before, maybe? Um, and he was saying that he, well, he sort of lost motivation, turned up to training, knowing that he was going to be playing in the championship, which obviously surprised us all here on the pod. Mm. You know, would that, could that play into the, into the Saracens' fold? You know, people just get, you know, a bit, um, I'm sorry, I don't know, a bit relaxed, wrestling on the laurels a bit and, you know, get an upset maybe? 
Yeah, I, I think there's that danger. Yeah, for sure. Especially, as I said before, about guys who may have not really experienced championship rugby. Yeah. Um, I think when you look at that Sarri's environment, and I know, look, I'm not saying what they what's happened to them or done. I can look, they've, they've been punished and whatever you want to call it, rightfully so or not. Um, but I do believe what they have got is an incredibly strong bond in that team. Uh, yeah. An incredibly strong environment as well. Um, it's one whenever I played Saris back in my Exeter days or Northampton days, is you just knew they 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 got around each other. They they stayed in their bubble. And I guess what I'm trying to say, therefore, is whether it's going to play at Hartbury away next season or if they're going to play at home against Ealing, they will be treating it absolutely as if they're playing Leinster at the weekend or playing Bath, you know, at, at home. Um, they know I, I they'll, they'll be wanting to to get back up and uh, but yeah there's, there's definitely a, there's possibly a danger and who knows but um but I think when I look at that Saracens team they seem pretty clued on they they want to do it for each other um and I think you know that's the scary thing about it when they come down to the championship if they perform like they usually do when they're going well then that'll be a very tough side yeah perfect well uh, yeah thank you very much for coming on Will uh, just one final thing I want to touch on the uh, NHS crossbar challenge. You want to just talk us through that? Yeah. That on Instagram? Yeah, so uh, it's actually a uh, mate of mine and fellow Bedford Blues teammate Sam Leeming. He actually sort of, uh, I've got to give credit to him. He was this whole crossbar challenge idea. I think he's, he likes kind of coaching videos and whatever he's setting up. And and then I just got in contact with him because he nominated me. And I just said, well, hold on a minute. Like, this is just the easiest, fun thing to do and just sort of do. And not easy, but I mean, yeah, like, yeah. easy to, like, just set up a donation page and whatever mm-hmm. it might be, just whether it's 20p an effort, one pound an effort. So um, all it is is basically you can choose uh, however far you want to do it. I mean, me and Sam did it about 40 metres out and tried to hit a crossbar um, off the deck. But you can do it with your hands, your feet, tennis ball, rugby ball, um, if it's just a garden post you got, whatever it might be, yeah. give yourself a give yourself a challenge, see how many attempts it takes to, to do it, and then however many attempts, just um, yeah, donate, donate that to the page, which is in my bio on Instagram and in Sam Leeming's um, bio as well. And as I say, we're, we're over, actually, we're quite surprised. We're, we're heading, we're about 500, just over 500 pounds, 550 okay. quid in the space of about five days. So, um, there is a story of Captain um, Tom Moore, who I think uh, has meant that just giving uh, the page is going nuts. So it's all this. Like, £12 million? Well, that was this oh, morning. I think it's probably 15. more. 15.5 million. 15.5 million. So we, we've experienced a few glitches on our, on our <laughs> just giving page. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, nonetheless, look, anyone can get involved and get behind it. And, you know, we, we honestly, to begin with, we just thought it'd be like a couple of hundred quids to gather together a few friends but actually now it's picked up some momentum so um yeah mm-hmm. if anyone wants to have a go give it a go yeah, yeah definitely yeah please uh, a couple more things i did want to ask um yes the uh the work, first question i wanted to ask obviously you play for a few different teams play for america what would you say is your best rugby experience to date what's the one that really sticks with you and you think that oh. um yeah, uh, I think, I mean, look, I could I, I give the, the obvious answer, which is obviously J- the World Cup in Japan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, was, that was pretty amazing, obviously, for reasons. I, mm-hmm. I have to say, yeah, I was disappointed how, as a team, we, um, we performed great on occasions, but not good enough overall, um, which is disappointing, the results. But um, I think, um, for me... I do have to say some of the, I think, best times have been with the US. I mean, I've travelled the world, uh, played against some of the best players, uh, played in some of the greatest you know, stadiums. And and I think I'll, I'll give two occasions. Um, kind of one was um, in 2018 when we beat Scotland in Houston, which was just amazing. Um, great stadium we played at. <coughs> the aftermatch, we didn't actually go out. We were just in our hotel until 6, 7 a.m., um, just, just enjoying ourselves, <laughs> put it that way. Yeah. Uh, so that was great fun. Um, and uh, the feeling of, of actually that same year kicking a uh, winning goal to beat Samoa um, out in San Sebastian was was a personal big moment. What I actually think for me is um, we, uh, due to um, the World Cup, you have the Pacific Nations um, 
a PNC, Pacific Nations Championship, which is basically like the, the tournament just before the World Cup for the Pacific Nations. And this year, uh, or sorry, last year, it was actually um, a lot of the matches were held in Fiji. And I mean, Fiji is ne- a place I've never been to. I don't actually think many actual nations have gone and played in Fiji. Yeah. Um, and we played Samoa and we actually played Japan in the final. Uh, which is pretty amazing. I have to say, I knew that day that they were going to do well at the World Cup because they were a decent <laughs> team. But honestly, playing Fiji, uh, not Fiji, sorry, but playing in Fiji, um, I've never been to a place where rugby is just religion. Like, literally, yeah. you walk down the street, you're recognised, whether it's you personally or whether it's just you as the team. Well, actually, yeah. the boys, we had a couple of sevens boys on our on our circuit, on our squad, uh, mm-hmm. Ben Pinkelman and Madison Hughes and Martin Acefo. They were literally like David Beckham walking into Borough Market in London. It was, I'm not joking, they were like, <laughs> mobbed, mobbed. And I couldn't see them. Oh, they love it. And, and it must be like cricket uh, in India, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. football, obviously, it, over here in the UK. But I've never been to a place where I just get like rugby was just like the Bible. And yes. you name it, any like park, there was like 20 v 20 touch going on. Um, the, the atmosphere was crazy when we were playing. Um, and just a very special place uh, to play rugby. And it was kind of like to have that experience. I actually don't think there's going to be too many international boys who are ultimately going to get that experience, which is quite sad. Yeah. 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 Uh, one other question I've got um, before I say Dom's got any more wraps out. Um, you might have heard he called me Situation. What was it? Situation Neil? Scenario no, Neil, your nickname. Scenario is. Neil. Apparently, right. apparently, they give a lot of scenarios. Well, bear with me. So the scenario here is you're in lockdown for two weeks. Right, it has to be with a player you've either played with or currently play with. Um, you can't go out. You've got to stay in for the whole time. People are bringing you food, that sort of thing. Who would make it an absolute living hell? Who would be the worst person you can think of that you would hate to be in isolation with for two weeks? Uh, oh, I should tell you what, there's some stinky rugby players out there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's always... Um, uh, who, would I, who would I hate to be with? You know what? I'm going to go with James Hiltzbrand. Guy who plays his rugby out in Australia and also <laughs> with the US. Um, just an Aussie, bogan Aussie, just wouldn't shut up. Uh, <laughs> just uh, untidy. Um, so, uh, look, James, love you to bits, mate, but nah. You're not, into the bus. <laughs> no, absolutely not in lockdown, but no, nah, it's, uh, I'd say there's probably a lot of rugby players who uh, you want to be, wouldn't want to be around for a full two weeks. Perfect. And just one more thing, sorry. Um, obviously, I don't know if you're aware, Dodger Sevens very ho- heavily linked to mental health awareness. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're trying to raise awareness for it. I know everyone's sort of tapping into this now at the moment. Do you have any messages or any suggestions for people that might be struggling at the moment in lockdown, in isolation? Have any tips or ideas that could, could help them um, feeling low or anything like that? I think, to be honest, the, the one I'm going to say is, is probably pretty cliche, but it really is just speak, just talk. Yeah. Um, you know, we found it around here. We're very lucky that we live in a sort of terrace house sort of community mm-hmm. and people are really helping each other. And we've got some people around here, elderly who live on their own, uh, a particular guy that me and my, my partner were, were helping out. Um, and it's it's kind of, you know, you, you realise that we're, we're all vulnerable, mm-hmm. whether we live on our own or not. We're, we're not yeah. we're not we're not all Superman, you know. So just the ability to talk, it, it, it's 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 good to talk. I wouldn't say like, oh, yeah, it's fine to talk. It's good to talk. And I, I know that whenever I have problems, not even just on the rugby field or off, not off the field as well. Um, and I think if people can have that sort of general feeling, um, you'll be amazed how your mates, your family, they're there for you or actually you know what even if you spoke to the the guy next door you know if you told them and said oh, i'm struggling that they'd hear you out and yeah. i think what you've realized in this period of time um and i talk about covid19 i know we touched it with the whole captain tom morgan to, captain tom moore sorry mm-hmm. is like as a nation when times are difficult when people are having hard times we actually come together we, we come out out of it pretty well and I just sort of feel for people with mental health battles I can honestly say that I probably had some mental health battles over the times um you know it's just speak I'm lucky enough that I've got my partner and my family but whoever it might be for you just just talk yeah perfect yeah. advice thank you very much yeah on that note thank you very much Will and uh I hope that we'll uh, get you back out on the pitch soon and get you back on the pod take care guys thank you thanks, thanks, for your time, thanks very much Bye. Thanks.